Hello Internet, uh, time for another quick update video on my Homebrew Z80 project. Um, so as you can kind of just see at the, the top of the frame here, I've got my um, uh, CF to IDE uh, interface uh, soldered permanently onto the, the proto board now, so that's no longer on the breadboard, it's, um, it's there for good, very easy to use. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you um, the functionality of this chip here that you can't really see. This is a, um, uh, a DUART. It's a, a dual UART, and a UART is a, a universal asynchronous uh, receiver and transceiver. Um, so this is a device which, uh, you know, on, on one side of it, it talks to a, a microprocessor over an, an 8-bit uh, parallel data bus, and on the other end, it has uh, a single receive pin and a single uh, transmit pin, and it um, <clears throat> uh, basically, you know, uh, sends bytes in a, a serial fashion, one bit at a time, by sort of toggling a voltage between a high and low at a, um, a fixed speed or board rate. So, um, you know, the, those of you who uh, used PCs in the, the good old days before USB came along probably had uh, something like this on the back of your computer, which you would have called a serial port and plugged your, um, your mouse or a dial-up modem into. Um, and so UARTs are, you know, what, what sits behind those old um, those old serial ports, and you know, in the uh, in the much older days, you know, UARTs and, and serial cables were used to connect uh, mini computers to um, to dumb terminals, um, and that's that's kind of the thing that we're going to be seeing today. So this this chip is actually a um, it's the uh, SCC two six eight one by um, by NXP semiconductor. Um, it's actually a you know relatively um, modern chip by the standards of a, a Z80 project. Kind of the the classic uh, UART chip to use for these kinds of, of projects is the 16550, which was um, you know, which was used in the the early IBM PCs. Um, I went with this thing because it's uh, you know it's the same same size um, as a 16550. It's a, a 40 pin uh, wide wide dip package, but um, you know, instead of just having the one UART on there, like the 16550, the SCC2681 has uh, two UARTs and also has, uh, you know, a bunch of other handy stuff on there, like a 16-bit um, a programmable timer and some general purpose simple output pins. It's kind of, you know, it's a nifty uh, kitchen sink kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, the SCC uh, chip is on the breadboard here, wired into the, the Z80s uh, bus. Um, down the bottom here, if I move the camera slightly, you can see I have, um, this is a, uh, a 5 volt, um, FTDI cable. So this, uh, you know, these, these three lines here are just, uh, a ground line, um, and then transmit and receive coming to slash from the, the duart. And then this cable down here is kind of, um, followed along, connected, uh, via USB into a laptop that I've got set up over here. Um, Move the camera. Yeah, there we go. So the the um, you know, there's an editing computer is connected to this ThinkPad, you know, via um, USB here. And what I'm about to do is run uh, the GNU Screen program. Um, so hopefully you can read this pretty clearly. I've got the font size pumped up. I'm just running Screen, and as uh, the only argument, I'm giving it uh, slash dev slash ttyusb naught, USB naught, which is the um, you know, the uh, Unix device file for my uh, FTDI cable, so I'll run that. The screen is blanked, and basically all that happens now is every time you press uh, a key on the keyboard, um, the the ASCII byte for that key gets transmitted um, out the FTDI cable into the the UART, and then the Z80 can can read it and do whatever it wants with it. And any time the UART um, outputs a character and comes into the computer, it, you know it gets printed on the on the screen. So this is basically just turned this laptop into something like a dumb terminal. Um, the, the screen and the keyboard, you know, are being used as, uh, you know, input and output devices for the serial connection to the Z80, and, and that's it. Um, nothing else is happening. So, you know, just the fact that when I, um, when I type things in up here, you can see the characters appearing on the screen. That's not, uh, that's not going to be a screen doing that. Uh, that's, you know, the, the program that I have running on the Z80, um, on the CF card. Is is reading you know each byte in off the from the UART and then it's echoing it back out again so it shows up on screen. You can actually turn that off and then you know nothing nothing happens when you type. So uh, 
yeah, that's, that's the way things work. So the program that I've got written on there now is just a kind of very simple thing to test that this works. I've uh, typed out hello world. Um, actually, I typed hello ward. Oh well. Um, I've typed hello ward and the ZAD has stored that string uh, somewhere in, in its RAM. And when I hit enter, it's printed out uh, drow ole or, or hello, wo wo hello word backwards. Um, so this program is, you know, really, really dumb. It just sits there in an infinite loop, and whenever you type something in and hit enter, it spits out the the mirror flipped uh, version of that string. So it's it's quite useless, but um, you know, it it proves that the um everything's working nicely. So uh, you know, this this is a you know a quick and and easy and convenient way to to interface. Um, you know, with a, a eight bit micro micro computer from a a, a real PC. You know, you could um, you could easily do something like take a, a Raspberry Pi um, and you know stick the FTDI cable into that, and then you know uh, stick a, a USB uh, Wi-Fi adapter into the Raspberry Pi, and then you could SSH into the Pi and screen into the Z80 machine, and you know control it from anywhere in your house, kind of giving it a you know convenient modern wireless access thing. Um, it's a heck of a lot less work than getting. Uh, you know, any any kind of um, video system set up for the Z80, or any kind of uh, real, real keyboard matrix decoding scanning kind of thing. So um, yeah, so there's you know there are two serial uh, outputs on this chip. I'm going to use one of them um, to communicate you know with a with an outside PC as a simple uh, user interface, um, and the other one I'm going to leave uh, you know open for hooking the computer up to, to external peripherals. Um, so, you know, an obvious thing to do might be you can use uh, that second serial connection to connect the Z80 computer to uh, an Arduino or any, some other kind of microprocessor. And then, you know, you, you can um, you can control uh, SPI and I2C devices and other things which are hard to interface directly to a, a microprocessor that only has a, a parallel parallel data bus. Um, yeah, so that's, that's it for this leg of the project. Um, you know, at this point, I, I could do a whole lot of coding and write, you know, uh, any any kind of text-based program you wanted, really. This is a kind of a, a big step towards a complete usable computer, but um, I'm going to forge ahead for now and, and keep monkeying around with hardware and try and get a, uh, a real-time clock working. Uh, okay, thanks for watching.